Wes Hal, mean friend, and welcome to it another video. Oh, yes, indeed. This is a video about the latest superhero movie, my dear friends, The Flash from 2023. This is not a review per se, but more of a reaction of mine to that particular film. Now, if you've been following my channel for quite some time, you know that... Uh, my channel is mainly fantasy oriented, but it is a fact that uh, I am a lifelong fan of uh, the American superhero comic books. And uh, I have always enjoyed reading the pages of DC Comics more than Marvel Comics. And that is why I just cannot refuse uh, the opportunity to see those heroes on the big screen, although we know that the quality of the of the entertainment has been going steadily downwards lately. Now, it remains a fact that um, the comic book that is in question here, that served as a more or less um, a source material for this particular film, I read a long time ago, it's called Flashpoint, but it is only a vaguely uh, adapting this comic book. It is absolutely not a direct adaptation of it. And if you think about it, no uh, superhero movie has ever been, and I mean uh, live-action superhero movies, has ever been a direct adaptation of a specific comic book storyline. They always just borrow bits and f uh, pieces from uh, different... Uh, stories and different issues and different collected editions. Now, in this case, we are dealing with uh, Barry Allen, the Flash, who is, is really not the Barry Allen that we imagine him to be, for those of you who have read uh, the comic books. Now, the Flash Rebirth that came out years ago, written by Jeff Johns and illustrated by Ethan Van Skyver, I do recommend 100% that you get and read. Now, a lot of people are saying that this movie is a flop and that it's very bad. And although, as of making of this video, it is not performing very well in the box office uh, all around the world, I have to say that um, it's not a bad film. And I actually enjoyed it, despite many flaws. And I'm going to now s say uh, my theory about why uh, we don't like as many comic book superhero movies as we did in the past. Of course, the quality has been going down, but uh, not so much. Now, this movie is not particularly bad. It's not a horribly made movie. It's actually very well written. The dialogues are good uh, and witty, and I enjoyed the jokes in it. I actually enjoyed the humor. Now, I absolutely detest the Marvel Cinematic Universe kind of jokes, uh, because they are just, they are in those films each and every single five minutes, and they are dumb, and they are stupid, and just are not funny, not fun. But here you can actually, uh, like, laugh loud, uh, laugh out loud, uh, multiple times during the, the film. Every single uh, side character, every single supporting character was very, very well portrayed, and I enjoyed them all. All the characters in this film were very well portrayed, except for the main character. Unfortunately, Ezra Miller is one of the most annoying persons I have ever seen on uh, a big screen, and it is absolutely not what I imagine Barry Allen to be like. Unfortunately, when every single character in your film is... Uh, good, very well written and likable, except for your main protagonist or your main character, that's not good. But uh, let us move on. What I find to be the biggest and the most pleasant surprise about this movie is the character of Karazor uh, L, uh, the Supergirl of this particular universe. She is, for me, the best part of the film. And it makes me even happier, because I know that she received the biggest backlash. Uh, maybe besides uh, Ezra Miller. But in his case, it was it is justifiable. In her case, no. People just didn't like the fact that, uh, well, she looks different than the main uh, DC Universe uh, Supergirl. The, you know, the main universe. Because, of course, uh, the 
continuity or the world of the DC Comics is a multiverse. It is composed of many different uh, Earths and universes. So in, in, in each and every single individual different uh, Earth or universe, well, the characters might be different. And here in this universe, it's not the one from the main universe. She looks like this. And the actress who portrayed the Supergirl actually did an excellent job and the character itself is good the the story uh, and the introduction of the character was rushed a lot a lot of things in this film were rushed it is as if they were cramming three or four films into just one everything seemed uh, very very quick maybe too quick but on, but on the other hand you absolutely cannot say that the movie is slow paced the pacing of the movie is very good it is an action flick an action film that you go watch in summer summertime blockbuster movie everybody should go see this film it is a superhero film it is a blockbuster it's a, it's it's the summertime i went to cinema with my dad to celebrate Father's Day, because we used to go to cinema all the time when they were still showing good films, and there was almost nobody in the film in the, in the in the movie theater. There were very few people, and I I I was I was surprised because I said to myself the very same thing. I mean, come on, it's summer, it's it's Saturday evening. This this cinema should be crammed with people, and it wasn't. So. Why don't we enjoy superhero films as much as we did in the past? Yes, it is the declining quality, but also we uh, have set the standard uh, very high. Now, you have to compare the films that are being done nowadays with everything that has been done in the past. If we only focus on the superhero genre you have to get, uh, take into consideration films that go as far as uh, Superman with Christopher Reeve and then Tim Burton's Batman. Let's not count Batman 66 for, for, for the time being. And then all the other superhero movies that came out, like the rest of the Batman films and The Blade and the X-Men, uh, the first three X-Men films, and then the Hellboy films and then The Blade which I think Blade could be considered to be like the first like Marvel movie of modern era. I think your opinion might differ. And then there we've got bloody Batman trilogy by Christopher Nolan, which uh, as far as the craft, the film craft goes, it is the best superhero movie trilogy ever made. And then you've got all the Marvel Cinematic Universe phase one and two, which were still very good. And then you've got the first couple of films from the DC multiverse or DCU. You've got the Man of Steel and then the other ones and Wonder Woman, the first one, which was very good. So, And then you've got all those films, all those good films, and you have to compare this one to, to the previous ones. Of course, it won't do very good, especially then when the CGI is so bad. And I have to admit the CGI in this movie is very bad. So... If I have to summarize my thoughts about The Flash from 2023. Negatives. Uh, some things are rushed. <laughs> You've got some plot holes, some inconsistencies, but it's always like that when you are dealing with a film about time traveling. So <clears throat> there are many inconsistencies, many plot holes in that film. A can of beans for all of them. This is a non-spoiler video, so I shan't say any more. Uh, the main character, the protagonist, is unlikable, and you should make your protagonist the likable character. If there were no other likable characters, you need to make your protagonist a likable character. So CGI is bad. Plot holes, they are there. And um, the main character is... Ugh. And the good things, it's other than that, it's very well written. Like the dialogue. The dialogue is very well written. The jokes, very well written. The supporting characters, they're all fantastic. It's funny, it's action-packed, it's very well-paced, and um, it's got a message, a clear message, which is not woke. Everybody will be talking about, oh, is it woke? No. 
No, absolutely not. If somebody to- uh, tells you that it's woke, they're lying. They're taking just <coughs> something and pretending that it's woke. No, no. If somebody tells you that Supergirl is punching people, well, she's Supergirl. She is, she is supposed to be punching people. Like every single superhero, they are, su- they are supposed to be punching the villains. So, not woke, absolutely not. If you are afraid about the woke aspect, no. There, there's, there's no trace of wokeness. And and then, uh, to the end. Um, I have to mention the cameos. I will not say who appeared in the film. But there's a lot of cameos. And if you like Nostalgia Bait, if you like May- Member Barry, if you like cameos, you will love this film. That's all I'm going to say. So all in all, the movie had tremendously huge number of flaws, but I liked it. All right then, let me know in the comments down below what you think, and that will be all. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm out of here.